All right, guys, uh, back again here. Uh, Jack Spirico with the Indoor Aquaponics Project. And I uh, want to make a couple things clear. Number one, the lighting you're seeing, that's just plain old light. That's just so that you can see better. My uh, new uh, LED grow lights that I'm going to be uh, trialing in this are not here yet, and I figured it'd be better that you see well uh, than not see at all. And the light certainly can't hurt the plants. Number two, this is really important. A lot of the stuff you see here probably wouldn't have been planted this way in normal circumstances. I am not telling you to go out and do exactly what I did. I'm accelerating this. I went out and bought a bunch of crap that you can put right into a bed. Uh, pulled some leaves off and made some salads and did some other things. Uh, took all the celery sticks, put them in a, a jar of water, that type of thing. Normally the way this would work, let's start out with something like um, this lettuce plant right here. This is a red leaf uh, romaine. Normally with this, it wouldn't even be in here yet. You know, I would I would just keep pulling leaves off. Instead of doing what everybody does, which is cut the bottom, you know, and end up with that base, pull your leaves. And when you get down to where you just have a core, then you go ahead and plant that. And that would be bringing the stuff out here as it was done, or the green onions. Generally what I do with a green onion, I cut the tip off the green onion, I plant the tip. Uh, I went out and bought a bunch of green onions to show you how this works. So... This would be something more that you would phase in over time. And if you have a couple beds, there's always some place that you can take that celery core, or that, uh, that beet or what have you. So let's talk about what I've got here and, and what I'm hoping to get out of it. Number one, the first thing you'll see coming out of here that is true growth is going to be garlic. And I left a couple of these cloves out for you to see. When you get garlic, usually you get those nice big cloves of garlic that you can do something with. And then the whole center is these little narrow ones that you... Uh, you just can't really seem to get much garlic out. It's not really worth peeling or jacking around with. What you do is you take all of those and you just pop those down in your media, cover them over, and I mean, by next week, you'll have, you know, almost as tall as the green onions here, of uh, thin garlic um, greens sticking up. And you cut them off and they grow back. And you cut them off and they grow back. And they do that four, five, six times before they finally, like, you've worn out the clove. It doesn't have any more energy. You're not letting it make any energy. Or you can let it get kind of big to recharge itself a little bit and then cut it off. And you can get them to last pretty long that way. Um, but that's the fastest thing I can tell you how to produce in an ebb and flow bed. Uh, again, I'm talking about a week. You'll have cuttings you can take and you use them like chives. We're not going to grow garlic bulbs in here for garlic production. But even if you grow your own garlic, you're still in the same place. You pull out that bulb of garlic and you end up with all those little cloves. Throw them in your ebb and flow beds. Next, as I was saying, green onions. So green onions, generally I go and I, I'll cut them about like, like that long. Stick them in your ebb and flow beds. They grow back. What I decided to do here, just go ahead and put them in. And uh, like I'm doing fish tacos tonight, I probably need two green onions to do that. So I'll come out and I'll just cut them off at the base. That works too. And then I want you to think about this. Ask yourself a question. Do you think that green onion will be better in three days if it's kept in the refrigerator or better in three days if it's kept here? So you can turn this into a storage facility as well. Next up, uh, I have my purple sweet potatoes, but I'm going to have a lot of space to grow stuff in. And I really like growing sweet potatoes for both tubers and greens. So these were some organic sweet potatoes. And they were small tubers that were available. They had them on sale by the pound, so I was able to get two tubers really, really cheap. We'll throw them in there and see if they start slow, throwing slips for us. If they do, maybe we'll do some rafting. Maybe we'll grow some and get some sweet potato greens over the, the winter when we don't normally have them. This guy here, I almost never buy these, but I thought it would be good for this project. This is uh, butter lettuce that was grown, I'm almost 100% sure, hydroponically. It's the ones that come in a clamshell. They still have the roots on them. Uh, I pulled some of the leaves on the outside. It looked like they've seen better days. Gave them off to the chickens. And what I'll do is just every time I want to make a salad for lunch or something, I'll come out here and I'll just cut and let it come again. And we'll see how long that one lasts. Celery. This is one of my favorite hacks. Um, I love growing celery in an aquaponic system. Celery has been a plant that throughout my life I've grown a lot of plants. And I've always had a hard time growing celery from seed. Um, and the celery you buy in the store, like this is the inner part. You see how nice and like light colored, sweet, crisp it is. The reason that is, is they blanch it. They basically tie the bunch up and that's why your outer parts of celery are dark green and the further you go in, the more light green they are. When you do this, it's gonna end up dark green, very dark green. 
Um, and it's going to have a lot more celery flavor. It's not going to be the celery sticks maybe that you want to put peanut butter on and eat or something like that. But for your cooking, your frying, etc., this is exceptional. I have one bunch of celery out of my greenhouse growing in one of them flow beds. I've been cu cutting celery off it for over a year from one core of celery that people throw away. So that's another thing we have in here. Coming around here, um, beets. Now, what I was hoping to do was find baby beets, specifically like golden ones or different colored beets. And uh, none of the stores that I went by to, I went to two stores today, neither one of them had them. Uh, I'll try to get maybe later this week, get down to a place called Central Market, which is like Whole Foods on steroids uh, type of thing. Uh, though not everything there is organic. Um, but I was able to find some nice beets, beets out of Brookshire's. And I've tried them two different ways. So I've never done this with beets before. I can't see that it won't do well, though, based on everything else I've ever done. This one and then that one right there, I've gone ahead and cut. And then the one that's on the other side of the pipe there, you can see I left it exactly the way it was. We'll see what does better. Um, but we got that. This is a romaine. I bought just a, a head of romaine lettuce. I pulled off everything except basically the heart, popped the heart in there, and again, we could probably come out here, starting tomorrow if I want to, I can come out here and pull a few lettuce leaves off both of those and keep going until they need to grow back, including that head over there. Um, my hope is after a couple weeks of getting everything established to eat something out of this bed every day all winter long without completely depleting it, but I will be using grocery store leftovers and anything else I can come up with to restock it, just just so you know. I'm gonna go around the other side so Dana doesn't trip me here trying to wedge my way through. Hey, Dana. She wants a can of wet food, so she is very much in loving mode, but it's actually butter you up mode. All right, so let's come back around here. Again, there's the beet. That's the way they were available. I have found sometimes at the grocery store bundles of baby beets where the beet, like the beets on those, those are like pretty good size ones, where the baby beets are only like about that big and they have the full greens on them. That's what I'm looking for. I think that would be a fantastic way to grow greens. You know, beet greens chase a lot like Swiss chard. I've got some Swiss chard out there that some pest has gotten in that greenhouse and really eaten hard. I'll probably go grab the cores. There's like three or four cores of Swiss chard that again, I've been cutting off of for like a year out there. I'll probably bring them in, maybe give them a little bit of like a soap water to make sure if any kind of insects on them that's, that's you know, infested them is uh, wiped out. And I'll probably pop them in here because they'll do better in here probably than they will out there right now. And then this is watercress. Now, if you guys have seen my other videos, I have watercress all over the property in all of my aquatic systems. I have it in my ponds. I have it in my ebb and flow beds. I have it everywhere. It all started with what you're looking at. That's a new clump though. So I bought this at Albertsons today. It was $2.50 for this clump of watercress. I have been growing watercress out of a $2.50 clump of watercress for over a year. Uh, there's some of the, and you can see like this is stuff out of my other system. See how dark green it is compared to this stuff from the store? I'm gonna tell you this about buying living watercress from a store. Do not mess around. When you get it home, get it into something like this immediately. Get it stabilized because it will go to crap and die like almost immediately as soon as it's not being taken care of. Once it starts growing, then you can take your little pieces, like a little piece like that right there, pop a hole in your, your raft bed and, and, and root it. So that's where we are right now. My buddy Braylon, my grandson's come out to say hello. He went to the store with me today and we got all this stuff. And uh, I'm going to try to get this uh, little wicking bed filled up today. And maybe we'll do uh, starting out there just to get something fast. Uh, sunflower microgreens. That'd be a great thing to do there. Anyway, buddy, we have fun today. Yeah. What'd you learn? Nothing. Um, nothing. <laughs> nothing. You learned nothing. Okay, I think he did learn something. We learned about crows and hawks, didn't we? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, he's not much of a camera type person. Anyway, guys, we'll catch up with you later. And uh, again, I'm not saying to go out and buy this stuff and shove it in there. I'm showing you kind of an accelerated method that would come from as you use these produce products, dropping them in. And uh, with that, we'll catch up with you soon.